support this morning. Thank you for your faithful servants who's been up early praying on our behalf. Lord, we know you received the prayers. We know you've answered them. We know you've done even more abundantly than ever we could ever ask. Thank you, Lord. And this morning, help us, Lord, to enjoy your word. Help us, Lord, as we are all seated at thy feet, that the word will minister life to us this morning. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we've been looking at the Lord's Prayer as a pattern that our Lord Yeshua left here for us, taught us, and had given us an example on how to pray. And by the grace of Elohim, we've been enjoying it in these past weeks. And today we want to look at how that prayer was ended. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13. The Bible says there, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We were able to look at that two weeks ago, how we pray that the Lord will help us, that we don't offend him, and he'll leave us, and Satan will come. Because if at any point, brethren, that we go away from the mainstream, from the trapped, from the path which he had for us, it then means that the enemy will bite. The Bible says, if the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. And our prayer is that Heavenly Father, to keep us in a place that we do not do things that will take us into temptations. And we also ask that he deliver us from evil. We pray it, as the Bible says, that the Lord to deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men that have no faith. We, for those of us who did not, um, who are just joining us, please, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, get the messages on Facebook and listen and let your heart be blessed. And today we want to look at the summary of that prayer, the conclusion of that prayer. And it says, for thine is the kingdom. Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Of all the things he has asked us to do, first of all, hallow his name to know that he is able to answer our prayer before we pray, to know that he can do all things, just to hallow him for he is. And then as soon as we do that, we go in straight to ask and say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, even as it's been done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Brethren, you can see this prayer is all encompassing. When you look at it, it touches every area of life. And at the end, you may not have asked all that you want to. At the end, you may think, oh, there's something else I want to say. Say, hang on. Even if you think you, you forgot or you think you don't have the time to ask or you think that your mouth is not expressing as much as what is in your heart. It says, hang on, leave it there. There's a good way to summarize it and it will bring everything. You know, when he says, even before we pray, he has already heard us that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever ask. And that is summarized here. He says, for thy is, he says, for thy is the kingdom. Amen. It is all yours. The kingdom of this world, the kingdom of heaven, whatever kingdom, whether it's in the north or in the south or in the east or in the west, all the kingdom of this present earth and the world in itself belongs to him. So whatever we will ask, brethren, he's already known it. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power. All power belongs to him. The power and the glory. So brethren, you could see, is a form of, oh, I don't know what to pray. Oh, I don't think I prayed all right. Oh, I don't think I asked everything. He says, Fine, don't worry. Bring them up in these. For thy is the kingdom. Everything in it belongs to you. Thy power, all power belongs to you. You are able to do all things. And thy glory, amen. Everything here, this is forever, amen. Hallelujah. 
What a glorious way. Brethren, are you sitting there and you say, oh, there's something I want to ask the Lord. I don't know how to do it. Or I don't think he's seen. Or I'm, I'm this. Or whatever. He says, hang on, no problem. This kingdom belongs to him. All power is his. And all glory in every way. The glory of the sun. The glory of the moon. The glory of the oceans. The glory of the mountains. The glory of men. The glory of whatever. You know some people visit some countries. And they're like oh that place is so beautiful. Oh I can't imagine. Have you visited and some people are just globetrotting around to see. Says all oh, those things are his glory. So whatever you want to ask or whatever you want him to do for you or whatever your brain cannot imagine how it will come to pass or how it will happen. The Bible says, for thine is the kingdom. The kingdom is his. All power belongs to him and all glory. So that's it. And once you do it and then you get up to say forever and ever. Amen. Which means for his kingdom, there shall be no end. It is forever and ever. Now, let's look at the scriptures and enjoy. I want you to follow on. Open your Bible. I want you to enjoy the scriptures, you know, and get the comfort and get the strength and get the blessed assurance and get that confidence that he is Elohim. He is Yahweh. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 39. The Bible says there, Know therefore this day and consider in thy heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Amen. There is none else. Know it. This day, I want you to know it. The first day of February 2020. 2020 I want you to know that he consider it in your heart already. That in this year, in this February, that they call the leap year. You know, I was just sitting down and I, when I was reading this, the Lord, all through yesternight for some days now, he's been showing me what his glory and what Satan has done to take the eyes of men. Brethren, you know, we sit and count days and time. Do you know that the calendar we are using today is the calendar of men? Is the days of men. Men had contended it and have decided it has to be 365 days. Do you know that what is ruling today even came from idolatry, from all the gods? The moon, the moon day, the Sunday, the, the, the Tuesday, the July days, the August months and all that, all dedicated to all these things and they brought them out to confuse men. All the calendars. Whether it's the old calendars or the new calendars or regional calendars or ancient calendars or tribal calendars or whatever calendars, the world do not even know. I can't even say how and when and everything started. That's one put apart. Not only in those have the confusion about all these things comes on the days and the times and the moons and everything just to make sure that man do not appreciate the bible says here consider it already in your heart don't be confused when they're saying oh you will live for this oh you will do this when you look at them you will see how much man has tried to invade the nature has tried to invade the principles that the Lord has laid before the foundation of the world just to bring about confusion. But when you sit down and know his Elohim, who he is, and because they started that to mess up our brain and our days and bring confusion into men, every other thing follows. Some people believe the word more than they believe the Lord. They believe what the reports have said more than the report of the Lord. They believe what the signs have said more than what they, be, they believe the word. They believe the governments. They believe the nations. They believe all the things going on. They believe the inventions. They even trust men more than they trust God. The word of men are it for them. You can't change them. It has ruled their Christian life that they are not able to trust the Lord so much. Let's see the Bible. He says, consider it in your heart. Already when you have done your prayers, consider it in your heart that his is the kingdom. 
all power belongs to him. All glory belongs to him forever and ever. Amen. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 12. But riches and honor come of thee and thou reignest over all. Amen. <clears throat> and in thy hand is power and might. And in thy hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. That is the scriptures. And when you have finished prayer, believe it. That both riches, if you think that giving you this day is not enough and you're asking for tomorrow and asking for the next 10 days and for the next 20,000 years, the Bible says here that both riches and honor come from him. And thou reigns over all. For those of us who believe that the Lord cannot help them. They have problem and they are running helter skelter to help themselves. Relying in the arm of the flesh. When you do those things you are saying Lord you can help me. I can help myself. When you outline all your problems and line them out. I have need of this. I have need of that. I have need. I don't have this. I need to do this. And because of that you leave the work of the Lord. And because of that you decide miss it and because of that you are not in church you are not in any of the activities you are not be being involved in expanding the kingdom because you think you have a lot of problem it's lack of faith be, by doing that it ordinarily you're saying god you can help me elohim you can help me i need to do something to help myself may the lord have mercy may the lord deliver us May the Lord forgive every brother, every sister that have taken their strength into themselves, thinking that is by the works of their hands that they will succeed in life. Thinking that the Lord has abandoned them and they need to do extra so that they can fulfill this, fulfill this, fulfill that, and fulfill that. Look, brethren, anxiety and worries and needs and wants have no end. The more you get, the more it comes. The more you want more. The Bible says here, but riches and honor come from him. And thou reignest over all. He reigns. When you know he reigns, you believe him. You will leave it all. You will take it to the cross. You will leave it as his throne of mercy, knowing that he's able to look after us. Daniel chapter 20, from verse 20 to 22. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. Amen. For wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and seated up, up kings. And set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Can we come to this point when we are praying? Can we ever know? Brethren, I urge you today, when you kneel praying, when you stand praying, when you lie flat praying, in any, when you sit praying, in any position you are, I want you to know that you are asking the one that is Elohim, Yahweh, forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Are you looking for wisdom? Are you looking for might? Are you looking for opportunities? They are his, and he changed the times and the season. Brethren, that we're seeing, that we're seeing. In the past hundred years, between the month of January and then February, all over the Western Hemisphere is blanketed with what? With snow, with snow everywhere in those three months. It's really very cold. But brethren, what are we seeing today? Things have changed. It's sunny right now. The temperature is up almost 11, going to 12 in some days. It's been raining. The winter season is completely messed up. The Met Office don't even know what to do. All of a sudden, things are happening. To last week, we heard of an um, um, earthquake, an intending tsunami in the Caribbean, and which is not the season it happens. The Bible says he changed the times and the seasons. It's all in his hands. It's all in his hands. In the past 10 years, yeah, people are going out there saying, oh, global warming, oh, what these are not, all those belongs to him. Brethren, let's just calm down and be at his feet and watch and glorify him for who he is. He removes kings, brethren. 
whatever king that wants to be a pharaoh on top of you, the Lord has the power to take them away. The Lord has the power to change things. Do we ask him first? Pray first and ask him wisdom. Or do we go to fight for ourselves to do what we think we want to do? May the Lord help us. To get the restraint to know that he's able to fight all our battles. He set up kings and removed the ones he wants to remove. He's able to remove, brethren, that obstacle, that individual that is standing like a pharaoh to you. The Lord has a way of doing it. He gives wisdom unto the wise. May the Lord give us wisdom. Most of the times, what causes problem is lack of wisdom. We are not operating in wisdom. We just get up and do what we want to do. No restraint, no wisdom around the situation. No wisdom around what we want to do. May the Lord help us to give us wisdom. It's by wisdom we live. It's by wisdom we go. Today, I pray that all of us, we ask the Lord for wisdom. Is profitable to direct. Wisdom is profitable to keep us. Don't just get up. And sometimes people are offenses, not for any reason, but because they lack wisdom. It's not like they are doing it intentional or that they are wicked or that they are bad. Their problem is lack of wisdom. Wisdom around what they are doing. Wisdom in decisions. Wisdom in doing things. Wisdom in moving. Why don't we sit back and ask God for wisdom and take a person who give to us knowledge to them that, that, that no understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. Ask the Lord to reveal he will. Even if you're a student, the Lord can reveal to you the exams to come, the papers to come. He can direct you pages to read, sections to read. He can do that. He will give you wisdom in school, wisdom to know those to associate with, those to avoid, things to do, things not to do, wisdom to live right in all. Are you a young person? Wisdom in career, in choices, in marriage, in travelings, in where to go, and in all those things. He has it. Are you an older person? Well, wisdom to now consolidate your life. You can't be living carelessly even when you are at that age and at that, you know, growing more. Wisdom. And let's see again what the Bible wrote, what Job says in the book of Job, chapter 12, 7 to 10, and then 12 to 25. Very interesting. Let's read it. But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, O oh, speak to the earth. And it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto you, who knoweth not in all these things that the hand of the Lord hath wrought these. The Bible is saying that Job is saying, look, God see the fowls, how do they fly? How do they, how does that wing, wing just, you know, you know, clapping it and just, you know, moving it takes them up to those altitudes, to that height and stabilizes them. How can they stretch their wings and they're stable? And just ordinary air, says, go and see. Go and study the fishes in the water. Go to the oceans. How do they live? Who made them? How do they breathe? How do they manage in that situation? Man cannot even live in the waters. Man cannot swim because we need the air to breathe and to live. But how come these creatures are living in the waters? We can't even be there for more than five minutes, for more than 10 minutes. We'll be drowned to death. We will not have any oxygen to breathe in. But look, I say, go and see. It's only the hand of the Lord to show us that with him, all things are possible. Can we take a break, brethren, and sit down and look out? Just look at the sky below you. Look at how beautiful. The Bible says, who had held those things? Can who had ever, is there any beam holding the heavens from not falling down on us? The hand of the Lord has wrought these. Take your time and study the elements of nature. Just go out to the bush and look out and see his greatness. And brethren, you will kneel down and ask him for forgiveness in all faithlessness, in all the ways you've not believed him, in all the ways you thought you could do it yourself. The Bible says that Job continued, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought these, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind is in his hand. Amen. That's why the Bible says, Why do we boast as if we had nothing? From verse 12, 
with the ancient is wisdom, and in the length of days understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He had counsel and understanding. Behold, he bringeth down, and he cannot build again. When the Lord brings down, it cannot be built again. Brethren, look at the areas that tsunamis had claimed that the oceans. We were looking at some of, you know, the landmarks of some, you know, islands. And brethren, if you don't take your time, you wouldn't see that the waters are claiming back of these islands, reducing them smaller and smaller. Unless you look through the satellite to look into the Google Earth, you could see that most of what we call their forest and the bushes are already under the waters claiming as much as it can brethren the bible says here that when he reclaims who what scientists what man that says there is no god will go back there to reclaim those lands again we go back there and push the oceans back brethren let's learn to reverence him exalt him do not let the world come with the notes and tell you there is no god brethren the bible says it's only a foolish person that says there is no there is no elohim he is he is almighty the bible says he shut it up a man and there cannot be no opening when he shuts man look at the story of nebuchadnezzar look at the story of heros look at the story in our time when men think that they are even in our present time they are no more they are gone the bible says he shut it up a man and there can be no opening behold he withholded the waters and they dry up also, he sent them, them out and they will overturn the earth. Brethren, the overturn, he takes them back. Tsunami comes and then take all our houses, take all our people, take everything back into the ocean. Who had gone there to reclaim them? Who had gone there to say, can you bring back those people, bring back those houses? Who had pushed them back? Is only the Lord. Brethren, can we not see all these wonders and then bow ourselves and reverence him and exalt him and glorify him? If you don't see this, you will think you're in church because of man. If you don't see this, you will think that you are doing things because of man. But when you know who he is, you will know that your salvation is of him. All you do is of him. Every foot you put in is of him. It has nothing to do with man. Don't be deceived. Thinking if you don't go to church, you cheated man. If I don't do this, I deprive them. If I do this, you are all on your own. He is mighty. He is powerful. Let's see him that way. The Bible says, with him is strength and wisdom. He dece the deceived and the deceiver are his. Bread and look. Oh, they deceived me. Oh, I dece they're all his. He knows the thoughts of everybody. He knows what is happening, even in the dark. And the Bible says, he leaded counselors away spoiled and made the judges fools. He loosed the bonds of kings and gathered their loins with a giddle. He leaded princes away spoiled and overthrew it the mighty. He removed away the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the aged. He poured contempt upon princes and wakened the strength of the mighty. He discovered deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. He increased the nations and desired them. He enlarged the nations and strengthened them again. He took away the head of the chief, the heart of the chief of the people of the earth, and caused them to wander in the wilderness where he, there is no way. They group in the dark without light. That's how they group. When you look at the world now, it's like they're grouping in the dark, bringing up things every country is heated up and when you diligently look into what is heated, hitting them off it's like they're groping in the dark with no understanding with no wisdom and these are men being voted in being you know trusted being elected or they took themselves there thinking they are wise look across the whole world and you could see diligently that what is going on can they not see where is the wisdom? He says they grew up in dark without light and he make them to stagger like a drunken man. That the world is staggering now like a drunken man. People come up, arguments, all those things, shaking the whole nations. It's like a drunken man and you are looking. Brethren, let's know who he is. When men think they have all the powers, the Bible, the Bible says he will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Our Father is mighty. Our God is powerful. Second Kings chapter 19. 
27 and 28, the Bible says, For I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me, because thy rage against me, and thy, you, thou rage against me, and thy tumult is come up in my eyes. Therefore will I put my hook in your nose. God is able to put hook in noses and draw people away. Brother, let the reverence him. This is to show his authority over men and my bridle in thy lips and I will turn thee back by the way which thou comest. Brethren, that is man. So why will any man think when we come before him? Brethren, let's put our heads down. There is power in him. The power to do all things. In Isaiah 44, 24, 24 and 25, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord thy Redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh thee. Or make it all things that stretch it for the heavens alone and that spread it abroad the earth by myself is all by himself. I can't stretch myself, not to talk of stretching my city, not to talk of stretching the earth. It all belongs to him that frustrated the tokens of liars and make diviners mad, that turn it wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish. Can you have confidence in these? That even though you think, oh, I don't know how to ask him, he is able to do. Just conclude your prayer. Even if you don't know what to say, just say, for thy is the kingdom, thy power and thy glory forever. Amen. Amen. So be it forever. It can be changed. Power is in his hand. So much and so much. Psalm 24 verse 7 to 10. The Bible says, it says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Who? That the king of glory may come in. Who is that king of glory? He is the one. There is glory in himself. And all earth shall tremble at his glory. Oh, brethren, that sickness will tremble at his glory. That situation will tremble at his glory. Look, that thing ailing you, being an offense, shall tremble at his glory. Brethren, I have learned. The Lord has shown me so many things in recent times, opening my eyes. Very little thing I'm seeing them. It's like I'm getting agitated. It's like I'm saying, why, why, why? The Lord, I have now come to the conclusion that the Lord has allowed all these things to bring my me to the point of seeing what he sees. If you look in and that I'm asking and say, Lord, continue that I may get knowledge and understanding and wisdom and your grace to be able to carry Brother, when the Lord wants to show us things, sometimes we don't want to see it and we're agitating, trying to make things right. But he says, no, I want to see you, show you some secret things you do not know. I want to reveal some things that you have not known. May the Lord help us to know that he knoweth everything. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. Now unto the king eternal. Amen. On to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. On to him, immortal. No way. He cannot die. He lives forever. Invisible. We can't see him. Not with these present eyes. Not with these physical eyes. Not with these carnal eyes. Not with this flesh or uh, with these flesh eyes. Says he's immortal. He's eternal. Forever and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, 6 and 7. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as of the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. For the Lord God, omnipotent, reigneth, is omnipotent. Hallelujah. For the Lord God, omnipotent, reigneth. Brethren, when you run through and you are going through or you find yourself in the thick of darkness, why not open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. For the Lord God, omnipotent, reigneth. He reigns everywhere, brethren. He reigns in the sea. He reigns at the deep of the oceans. He reigns on the top of the mountains. He reigns in the caves. He reigns even in the darkest part of this world. That is him. The Bible says here, hallelujah. 
Even in situations, you say, what can I do? Even in exams, you say, I don't think and I understand. Why don't you open your mouth and say, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reign it. Don't forget. When the, when the enemy came against Hezekiah and he was like, what can I do? And the king of Assyria says, do not let Hezekiah deceive you for God cannot save you. The Lord says, raise me salt, raise me, just raise me singers and I will do what I know to do best. Why don't you glorify him in your heart? Why don't you bless him in your heart? Why don't you praise him and see the walls of Jericho crumble? And see these giant armies that came against you crumble. He's able. Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigned. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife had made herself ready. May it be so unto us. In the name of Yeshua. John 16 verse 29 and 30. And the Bible says there. His disciples said unto him. Lo now speaketh to us. And plainly, and speak it, no proverb. Now we are sure, we are very sure that thou knowest all things. Brother, he knows all things. They were worrying themselves. Oh, where will we get this to eat? Well, where is he going? Where all those things? All in their heart. And he says to them, what are you doing? They were so startled. They, he was talking, they couldn't understand. The Bible says then, it says, Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needed not any man, that any man should ask thee. By these we believe that thou comest from Yahweh, from God, from Elohim. Brethren, come to the point that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that he is Elohim. He is mighty. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. All power belongs to him. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the one that rises it and no one can bring down. He is the one that opens it and no one can shut it. Remember, he is the one that sets up and brings down. He is the one that causes the waters to take and he is the one that pushes it back. He is the one that knows about every volcano. He is the only one that can stop it. He is the only one that can keep them at bay. He is the only one that can keep them lying very quiet and very steel and at his own will they open up their mouth to vomit out lava and all the heat and all the dust and all the ashes brethren all power belongs belongs to him the power of tsunamis the power of tornadoes the power of wild wind the power of all those things are in his power that is what he created brethren we're just ordinary human beings let's remain there let's know we are frail let's know that it's by his mercy that we have what we have let no man boast let no man think he's god let no man play him at all you know a lot of people play him especially when you, you think you are being gifted in him or he's using you and you want to play him, never play him. Never think you cannot come down. Never think you can. But brethren, let's keep ourselves where we should be so that we can reverence him, so that we can ask him, so that we can see our frailty, so that we can see our being, so that we can remain humble at all times, knowing that all power. And finally, in Psalm 62, 11 and 12, the Bible says, God has spoken once, twice have I had this, that power belongeth unto him. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, mercy for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Brethren, that is it. Know it so well that he's able able abundantly able to fulfill all that he had asked you will ask as the bible says in the book of romans chapter 4 verse 21 he's able to do it second corinthians 9 8 brethren our bible is a our lord is able to grant us abundant grace he's also able to do above all that we have asked that is the summary of this. And to know that he can guide you. He can subdue all things. He's able to fight all battles. He can use a rod to divide the rich sea. He can use just a jar of bone to kill all the Philistines in your life. He can use just your ordinary songs to cause the enemies around you into confusion and to slay them. He's able to guide you by the pillar of cloud by the day and pillar of fire by the night. He is the one in the midst of that five loaves 
and then two fishes. He's the one to multiply it. He's the one that is in that only plate that you have, that you think you will eat and die. He's the one that knows it. You cannot die, but that food will last forever and ever. He's the one that does small things. He said to them in the book of Zechariah, do not neglect the days of small beginning. He's the one that is able to multiply you. You may be small today. You may be doing a menial job. Your salary may be so small. You may think you have nothing. You do not know tomorrow. You do not know tomorrow. I was listening to the testimony of a man who now owns multi-million, you know, going into billion establishment, telling his stories. He says, oh, I lost my job. I was made redundant. And then we were almost homeless nowhere to go, even the council have, not, have nothing to offer us, myself, my wife and children, it's like the word caved in onto us, nothing, no hope, this same man today wants to build multi-millions, multi-million homes to the homeless, from almost being a homeless person. Brethren, you don't know tomorrow. Can we leave it with the Lord? Can we allow him? Can we show, can we act, allow him to do? So don't think it has not happened now. It will not happen tomorrow. You know, I remember myself when I was growing up at my age, almost everybody around me, friends were getting married. Everybody, it's all wedding bell today, wedding bell tomorrow. And it looks one day when I was 26, my, my pastor's wife called me and says, ah, Pastor Grace, I want to talk. Well, Sister Grace, can I talk to you? I said, yes. I said, don't you think you're being choosy and all those things? You've been in missions. You've been serving the Lord. And I said, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate what you're saying. But don't worry yourself. I'm okay. What do you want me to do? The Lord has not laid anyone in my heart, has not shown anyone at the appointed time it will happen. At the appointed time, brethren, he did not delay one day. Maybe you're there thinking, oh, everyone is settled. Oh, yeah, I'm a man. I'm now this age. I'm a lady. I'm now this age. It's happening around me. Calm down. There's a Boaz coming your way. There is a roof coming your way. Hallelujah. The Lord is able. Oh, I don't have a job now. I don't have a house now. You don't know what the Lord will do for you. Brethren, let's commit everything into his hands. Oh, I don't think I'll pass my exams. I don't think I'm as intelligent. I don't think I am this. Brethren, the Lord knows how to make Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, although what they ate was ordinary vegetable, the Lord knows how to make that vegetable, give them the sharpest brain. The Lord will do it for you. All you can say is, oh, I'm in the lion's den right now. Can the Lord hear me? How can I come out? Brethren, know it that he sent you there to become friends of the lions. They can never eat you. All their mouth will be shut and the Lord will deliver you. In whatever situation, remember, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever belongs to him. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you. We exalt you. Give us the grace that when we kneel down to pray, precious Father, that we will know who we are kneeling before. Help us to know where we are standing in thy presence, in thy throne of mercy, and give us the grace to really understand and to know that you are almighty. You run it. All power belongs to you. All glory belongs to you. Help us to know you're immortal. You're invisible. Lord, help us to know that you're omnipotent. You're omniscience. You know it all things. Help us to really appreciate for a tiny bit who you are. Oh, Lord. And even in our service. And even in our following you. To have an understanding who we are in you. That will bring great assurance. Precious Father, that's our prayer today. We can read the whole scriptures. All scriptures from Genesis to Revelation is just who you are and your power. We should read, read them shivering, read them in fear, read them imagining, read them, you know, petrified, read them, you know, chilled, Lord, on who you are. Oh, precious Father. Help us, Lord, that this physical body can carry your presence and can see and be humbled before you. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us. 
Thank you, Lord, for being all things for us. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers before we pray. Thank you, Lord, for your standing on behalf of your people. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is um, the birthday of um, our sister, Minister Hanan Kumba. Um, he, she was of the master class. She's from Botswana. Today also is the meeting of IMF um, at the daybreak with the king. So we USA. USA and then they just um, take a few cup of tea and join the meeting. So today is their joint meeting. Please, we'll call in. We'll pray now for our sister so that um, Pastor Jando Apostle Ron can announce, do some announcement before the time. We'll pray for her at the daybreak with the king and we wish her a very big happy birthday. God bless you.